send a camera to the stratosphere, we used a helium-filled balloon tied to a parachute, radar reflector, and camera payload box. Here's a schematic of the night configuration payload. In this video, we'll be taking you through the design and preparations leading up to the launch. Okay, Tyler, so tell us about our uh, computer stack. So this is based on our Arduino Mega, which you can see at the bottom of, the, of these stacked boards here. So that's just is basically where all the software lives and that's what controls all the, the major stuff. Um, and that is our flight computer. And then attached to that, we have this great PCB that Ashish did design for us, and you can see this has Nike Labs on it. And this allows us to plug in all the different things that we need to run the mission. So it allows us to put very easily our GPS unit, which allows us to talk to the Arduino. We have a Barrow uh, pressure board also, which is this guy here, which also allows us to talk to the Arduino. Okay. We also have a radio connected to it, which is this guy here. And we also have this ribbon cable, which has all the instrumentation which allows us to measure the temperature of each of our heaters. And so you can see each one has one of these little black nodes on it, and each of those is just a thermistor. And yeah. so you can see another example of that here. And this one's just gonna be hanging out the side of our capsule so we can record the telemetry outside. On top of that, we have two relay boards. And what these do is they allow us to pass basically current directly from the battery to our, our patch heaters here. And there's eight of those all together, and we have for this mission, we have six heaters, but one of those um, uh, relays is used to connect our nichrome wire. That's the letter N there. And that will plug into this switch here, and that allows us to terminate the flight whenever we want, so we can cut it down. Okay. And on the very top of the stack, we have this uh, relay shield, which just allows us to record the data that we're collecting during the flight. So all the uh, pressure, temperatures, uh, altitudes, coordinates, all those things. What's this guy? So this is our spot. So we have two methods of finding this thing which are independent from each other. Uh, in the past we've used cell phones, but in Fairbanks in the middle of nowhere, that's not gonna work so well. So we have two ways of finding it this time. One is we have our GPS on this, and it communicates those loca that location to us through this radio. But then we also have this, which is an independent unit. I'll show you that it's completely standalone, it's just this guy here. And this is a spot and this is a satellite link GPS unit. And so as this thing flies, <clears throat> it will tell us where it is via a satellite network, so it's completely independent of ground stations and all that stuff. This shows us the telemetry of the mission. It tells us which of our six heaters are in, so you can just see it just changed. Change the heater one. Heater one, and you can see with that, the temperature one is going up. Mm. And so you'll see it once it you know, the, the cycle on it right now is 10 seconds and AC heater 5. So you're actually talking to the this guy right here? We're talking to this guy right here by the by this radio. Right, so by heater 5 you actually meant this one. That exact one. So and that's, it's, toasty. it's toasty. It's for sure hot. Wow. So you're talking to the brick through this antenna? Through this, this, antenna. this antenna. Yeah, so, so through, through this antenna. So this is basically has the exact same radio inside. Yeah. But it's configured in receive mode and this will be strapped onto the roof. Got it, so we get real-time data from this dude here as it's in space. Exactly. Beaming down that data to this console over here. Exactly. Um, the other thing we have is this is like radio information down here. So it just tells us kind of how much, you know, uh, margin we're dealing with. We can also change units to meters, oh, to feet, so now we're in nice. uh, you know, GPS at zero feet just because we're inside and we don't have any information. Yeah. The real cool thing is now we can command a cut down from the ground. So when we press this one, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> That's smart. That's yes. good. And so now you'll see the, the heaters will turn off. And now we're in burst mode, uh -huh. so we're like in the cut down mode. And if uh -huh. you come over here, what is firing right now is this. So this is the connection to our nichrome wire. And if you come over here, you can see that this green light which is associated with this micro mm -hmm. is what's connected right now. To film the northern lights from the stratosphere, we got the Sony A7S. It's a full frame mirrorless camera. We got a 28 millimeter uh, F2 lens on it. It's a pretty fast lens. Um, 
I'm gonna play with that. There's also another one that I have, Rokinon 24mm uh, f1.4, which should be pretty great as well. To make this operate for over you know, two hours, three and a half hours of flight, we've got this uh, HDMI cable, which is routed to external recorder. That allows us to kind of bypass the 29 minute uh, max recording time that you can, you can you can get on these DSLRs. So it's recording to the Ninja Flame, so we can record you know up to six hours. Meanwhile, the Sony is powered by this external battery here, which is plugged in through. It's kind of hard to see here, but uh, this black battery is here, and that routes to kind of a shell of a battery case in here, and that'll let over two and a half hours from my testing. So that's our setup. This is our first ground test of the light configuration here. Environment testing. Environmental testing, that's right. Alright, we're activating brick at 2340. We got the Sony Zenos going, we got the 4K recorder. All we gotta do is hit go. Tyler is putting the device. He's putting the assembly into our flight box. Fits like a glove. This test is brought to you by Denali Brewing Truly Stout. After snowshoeing 12 miles to recover our payload in the Alaskan wilderness, we took a look at the data. Our balloon reached over 78,000 feet in altitude with a pretty steady ascent rate. After the balloon burst, the descent rate reaches 30 meters per second and drops to 6 as the parachute catches more air from the thicker atmosphere. The radiation levels measured by the Geiger counter steadily increase with altitude, with a peak recording of nearly 4,000 counts per minute. Here's a plot of payload temperature over time. The heater uses a bang bang controller so that sawtooth looking peaks are when the nearby heater is turned on for a short period of time. The temperature set point of the payload was 20 degrees C except for the lens which was set to 5. For most of the flight the outside air temperature was extremely cold hovering around minus 40 to minus 50 degrees C. Hey guys thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for our next launch.